Hello and uh, welcome one and all. This is part two of the DBT series. In the previous session, we gave an overview of DBT, created a DBT project, configured our environment, and materialized the sample DBT models to a Postgres database. In this session, we will replace the sample models with our own tables. We will work with tables that we will ingest with Airbyte. DBT is a SQL-based transformation tool. It does not handle extract or load part of ETL or EL. For EL part, we can use Airbyte or Python to ingest data. We are going to go with Airbyte as we will use an orchestrator later on to orchestrate the whole ETL pipeline. Airbyte setup and configuration is covered in this video here. We will build a data warehouse with Airbyte and DBT. For this, we'll need a source database that is transactional in nature. We want a normalized database that we can extract and load data from and then build our dimensions and fact. As it happens, Microsoft provides us with a normalized version of AdventureWorks. The link to the database is in the description below. You can download and restore it using the guidelines in this video here. We will use SQL Server as our source. And if you want to set up your own SQL Server environment, then follow the guidelines in this video here. We will stage the data from this AdventureWorks database into a Postgres schema. We will ingest the following tables from SQL Server. In this example, we are leveraging the views that are created based on the source tables. Just an FYI, Airbyte was not picking up certain columns from the base tables. Therefore, I created views from the base tables and use these views as a source. So whenever you're syncing tables with Airbyte, make sure to check each table's mapping. If the table is using a reserved keyword or unsupported data type, then Airbyte will simply ignore it. We will save these tables in a source schema in Postgres. And to persist these tables, all we have to do is click the sync button. And these tables will be materialized in Postgres. Once the sync is complete, we can inspect the source schema to make sure we have the tables persisted and all the required columns are present here. This was our extract and load part. We have the raw tables in our target environment. The extract and load part is done. Now we can use dbt to transform this raw data into the final shape for analysis. Let's open our dbt project and locate the dbt project.yaml file. In this file, we will replace the example folder with staging and we will materialize everything as tables. Under the models folder, we will rename the example folder to staging. Inside this folder, we will make some changes. Let's go ahead and delete the second model file. And we are going to rename the first model file to stg underscore dim product category. Make sure to check your spelling as this will be the name of the table that will be persisted to the database. In the schema.yaml file, we'll make few changes as well. We are going to drop the second model and we will rename the first model to stg underscore dim product category. This name should match our model's SQL file. While we are in here, let's go ahead and update the description. This will be used for auto-generated documentation. So make sure to provide accurate information in the description. I know the primary key on this table is not ID. We can confirm this by expanding the table's column node. Product category ID is the primary key. So back in our schema YAML file, we can update the ID to product category ID. After the key column, we can list the other columns that we want to bring in from this table. Let's go ahead and save our changes. Next, we'll create a source.yaml file. This will help dbt identify where our raw tables are stored. We start with the version and set this to 2. Following this, we define our sources and provide a name for our source as src underscore postgres. 
Following the name, we provide the schema and the database where our raw data is stored. Now we can list out the source tables that will be used for our staging models. We can go ahead and save the changes to this file. It's time to put this all together in the model SQL file. So let's open the SQL file for the stg underscore product category. We will replace the sample code with our source model and build the staging table with it. In this file, we should only perform like transformations such as name changes and data type changes. We can get rid of the configuration block that materializes this model as a table. Since in our project.yaml file, we are setting the materialization for all models as tables. So this block is redundant. In the source data CTE, let's remove the sample code and replace it with actual table. After the from clause, we place two curly braces. This is Jinja syntax. We make a call to a built-in source function. This will help create the dependency between the source and the staging model. This will be reflected in the model's DAG. We will review it once the model is materialized. Anyways, the source function requires two parameters, a source name and the source table name. The source name is src underscore postgres, and we have defined this in our source YAML file. DBD will look into this database and schema for our source tables. And this is followed by the table name. Since we are in the product category model, we will provide the table name as product category. In the following select statement, we define the columns that we want to persist. Here we can change the column names and change the data types of the column. We can go ahead and remove the comments. These are no longer relevant for this model. So this is how our staging directory looks after these changes. We have a source and schema YAML files and a SQL file for a model. Let's try and materialize this to make sure all the changes are valid. So back in command prompt, we will issue a dbt run command and wait for it to complete. It ran successfully. Let's go ahead and review it. dbt has found one model and this is correct as we have only one model in the staging directory. It has created this table in the public schema. All looks good. We can open our database client to make sure our table is persisted in the target schema. We can refresh the public schema and locate the stg underscore product category table. It is indeed present here. We can query it to make sure it has data and all the required columns. By default, dbt will persist our staging models to the schema defined in our connection. What if we want to save the staging models in a staging schema? dbt provides us with the option of specifying a custom schema. However, it will append the target schema along with the custom schema. So the schema name will be public underscore staging. That's not exactly what we want. We want to specify a schema name, for example staging, and it should be saved as staging, not as public underscore staging. We can define schema in the model file with a config block. However, this will be hard to maintain as we have to provide this configuration for each model. And imagine if you have hundreds of models, a better option is to specify schema name in our dbtproject.yaml file. Here we can define schema for each subject area for example, finance, sales, marketing, etc. Anyways, dbt uses a macro to generate schema names. A macro is like a function that we can reuse multiple times. Whenever we find ourselves using the same code in multiple locations, that's a good candidate for a macro. We can define custom macros to make our code dry, and that stands for don't repeat yourself. So we can copy this macro from dbt docs and paste it into a SQL file under the macros folder. Let's go ahead and create a new SQL file called generate underscore schema underscore name. In this file, we paste the code we copied. If this code looks a bit confusing, then don't worry. This is not SQL. 
This is using Jinja syntax. And if you want to get comfortable with Jinja, then I'll leave a few links to the Jinja docs. This is mainly used in Python frameworks such as Flask and Django. Anyways, let's try and break down this code. We have a function called generate schema name. This function takes two arguments, custom schema name and node. We set the default schema to the target schema. The target schema is leveraged from dbt's internal variables. On the next line, we check if the custom schema argument is provided by the user. If this is none, then we set the schema to the default schema. Else, we concatenate the default schema underscore custom schema. Here we need to revise the else clause. Simply remove the default and the underscore. Now this macro will set the schema name to whatever we specify in the dbt project.yaml file. Let's go ahead and save this file. In the dbt project.yaml, we specify the schema after the materialization clause. We set the schema name to staging. This indicates that we want to store all the staging models or staging tables in the staging schema. Let's go ahead and save our changes and give it a try. Before executing this, if you are to look in our database, we do not have a staging schema as of yet. Once we execute the dbt command, it will create a staging schema and persist the tables in it. Let's go ahead and issue a dbt run command. As we can see, the dbt has found our model, and this time around, the schema is set to staging, and this table is materialized in the staging schema. Previously, it was persisted to the public schema. Since we have specified a schema name in the project.yaml file, it is overriding the default schema to our custom schema name. Let's head to the database and refresh it. We see a new staging schema. If you are to expand it and check the table node, we have our staging table materialized under this schema. We can issue a select query to make sure we have data in this table. Let's go ahead and generate the documentation to see the DAG and the dependency between the models. We can issue a doc generate command. Let's launch the auto generated documentation. And here we can see our models DAG. We see our source model and the staging model. And the staging model is based on the source. I think this is a good stopping point. Let's recap what we have covered in this session. We have extracted and loaded data from source table from SQL Server to Postgres with Airbyte. We have modified our dbt project to utilize our tables in this project. We have defined a source YAML file that identifies our sources or raw tables. We have defined a schema YAML file that defines the staging tables. The staging table definition is stored in the related SQL file. Finally, we have persisted tables in a custom schema with the help of a dbt macro. In the next session, we will materialize all of the tables to staging and start building our dimensions and facts from these. So stay tuned. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.